See the bike in there. It's about time. This is the 2018 Aventin Matero in this box, and I recommend Aventins a lot because part for part and dollar for dollar, they just seem like they're a lot better than the competition. So let's get this Aventin Matero built up to see if the ride quality and the durability and all that goodness is actually as good as the specs say. Oh my gosh. I've never seen a bike box glued shut before. So far, I'm pretty impressed. I'm having a pretty hard time getting into it, which means it was probably really secure during shipping. Pretty impressive considering a lot of other bikes I've gotten, they've been like half outside the box. Well, this thing, I can't even get in. I'm not sure if this is standard, but it seems like the folks over at Aventon got a little bit excited to say the least. Now, this is what a nicely packed bike should look like. Everything is in one piece. Nothing is loose inside the box. It just slipped right out. Everything is nice and zip tied and covered in necessary protection. Ooh, wrapped the teeth. Ooh, ah. I am really, really digging this shade of purple and I wish they made the whole bike this color. I, oh, oh, it's getting to me. No way, no way, oh my gosh, you think? Well, would you look at that? I think only Lobby has done this in the past, but Aventon has properly tightened the cog and lock ring, and also the lock ring is pretty beefy and doesn't slip unlike a lot of other bikes at this price, around 500-ish dollars, and the cog is CNC'd. So not only did Aventon properly install and tighten the cog and lock ring for you, they also properly greased it. Overall, I'm really impressed with this and the details, and it seems like they care, unlike another bike company who shall remain unnamed. It's very nice of Venson to pre-install front brake, but nah. I've been riding brakeless and been having fun, so the brake comes off. Although I won't be using the brake, I must point out that it is a Tetro brake and Tetro lever. Tetro pretty much just hands down makes some of the best braking for the money. So now it's time to throw this in the closet with the four sets of brakes that State sent me with the black label, because obviously you need four brakes with the black label. 120 millimeter spacing. It's a shame that I even have to mention that. If you haven't seen the video and you don't know who I'm throwing shade at, watch that video right here. Again, I'm impressed with the details on this bike because this bike has a full carbon fork and you gotta be pretty careful with carbon components and so to prevent gorilla fisting the full carbon fork, the stem bolts are three millimeters, which is a bit smaller than most other stems. It seems like they thought about this. When people ask me what they should get for the first bike and they want an aluminum bike, I usually just point them to a Venson, even though I've never ridden one, because all the components just seem a little bit nicer than the competition. These handlebars are 31.8 millimeters, meaning they're stiffer. It is on par with State Bike's black label, but this bike is also cheaper, so that's pretty good. Also. This bar tape isn't your regular cork bar tape, but rather it has like this faux leather texture, and it's a bit similar to data bar tape, which I quite like. And now that I have an event in front of me and I can actually see and feel these components, so far they feel like they're pretty well made. But of course, I shall reserve my judgment for the full review. Probably the most interesting thing for me about this bike is the seat clamp and this Aero Z post. I'd imagine it probably makes you marginally faster, but I'm more of like a really practical person, and when I look at this, I just think if I want to replace the seat post, really limited options. 
Heck, this might even be the only option, depending on these dimensions. It's a bit overkill for everyday use in my mind. Also, I like that the clamp is separate and not integrated with the frame because a lot of times people will over torque integrated seat clamps and end up cracking their frame and then they have to replace their frame. So this way is the right way to go in my eyes. So I'm really interested to see how well this clamp evenly distributes the force around the seat post because a lot of times if a seat clamp on an aluminum bike isn't implemented very well, it can creak or even worse, it could crack. Something that I do like about the seat post though is that the bolt to adjust the fore aft and the angle is on the side so it's much easier to get to it rather than trying to monkey your way in under the saddle. It's just much nicer when it's on the side. I love it. This is a carbon seat post and it's super important not to grease it because if you grease carbon components there will be a chemical reaction that will break down the resin of the carbon and make it unsafe. So don't use grease on carbon components. Instead, there's this carbon like gritty frictiony paste that will prevent things from slipping. I do not have any because I hardly ever use carbon components, but hopefully this clamp is well designed enough and the seat post is well designed enough and it does have some sandpapery finish on the bottom portion. Hopefully that gives it enough friction or I won't need any carbon paste, but we shall see as always. Manual, Psh. what in the world? Oh, it comes with grease. I thought this was a different type of protection. I just noticed that they didn't put the reflectors on, but they included them in a box because they're legally have to. So thank you, Aventon, because ain't nobody want reflectors on their super cool track bike. The pedals that it comes with are just some cheapo courtesy pedals. And of course, I will be using my own set of pedals. So this is the Aventa Matera all built up and it's not exactly my style, probably the most flashy bike that I've ever ridden, but I can totally see the appeal of the looks of this bike. As for this striping theme that they've got going on with the decals, I'm not a fan of. It, looking at it just reminds me of an onion or for some reason the Pepsi logo or those blue cups from the 90s. I'm just not a fan of the decals. I do like the inside of the fork legs though. Man, that purple is great. But looks aside, let's see how this thing rides because that's what's really important. And if you want to see my first ride and impressions of the 2018 Aventa Matero, subscribe to watch that video when it comes out on Saturday, October 20th. And if it's already out, you can watch it right here. I get to ride a lot of fixed gears and the Aventa Matero seems like a pretty good bike so far, but thanks to the channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, for my daily bike, I get to ride a lug Wabi special. Out of all of the bikes that I've ridden and reviewed, Wabi's have been my favorite because they're made out of lightweight top shelf steel that gives the bikes a nice springy and lively ride quality while still having the right amount of stiffness. If that was a lot of bike babble to you, Pretty much, Wobbies have been the most fun riding fixed gears that I've ever ridden. Wobbies are also specced with no nonsense but high quality components, and unlike a lot of other complete bikes, nothing really needs to be upgraded out of the box. To put how nice Wobbies are into perspective, the complete Aventa Matero that we built up in this video is 58 centimeters, has a full carbon fork, a carbon seat post, and is made out of aluminum, and it weighs 19 pounds. My Wabi Special, on the other hand, is 58 centimeters, fully steel and lugged, and weighs in at 18 pounds. That's a full pound lighter than the Aventon, and it's a lot more durable because it's made out of steel. That almost sounds too good to be true, but it's not. So if you're looking for your end all be all steel fix gear for street riding, be sure to check out Wobby Cycles at the link at the top of the description. If you haven't ridden your bike yet, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.